Well, um, hello everyone. My name is uh, Nacho uh, Ignacio. Thank you for joining the session after lunch. I hope you don't fall asleep, and if you do, I will chase you in, in your dreams. So please be aware. Okay, uh, I am a cloud native engineer. It means that from the very beginning of my career, I started working with uh, web services and uh, cloud uh, technologies, and I'm in love with APIs and serverless. If you want to catch up on one of these topics afterwards, please join me for a coffee or something. Um, I'd like to start this session saying this is not a technical session, so if you're expecting a technical session, uh, maybe you still have time to go to the other ones. I'm going to cover some uh, real-world examples of customers delivering uh, nice and outstanding experiences. I'm actually going to use the other microphone, if you don't mind. Yeah. I, move. I move a lot, and I speak really fast, so uh, let's see how, good, how we do it. Um, we're going to talk bri briefly about some of the, the technology bits around these uh, experiences, but mostly we're going to focus in on, on our customers, and finally, uh, a little surprise that we have for you. So let's begin. Um, this is what we see in the ladder of uh, the stages of growth of a typical API program. We start from the bottom left, okay, where we see customers integrating and accessing through APIs, mostly internal, okay? So they build these APIs so they can communicate to each other on systems and they can expose internally the systems. And that's what maybe you can accomplish with API gateways, okay? But then there is a thin line here we like to, to talk about when you start building experience to the outside world, when you start to expose those APIs so people can consume it, okay? And finally, the last step on the ladder, we see a couple of customers, we have to say it's not like huge yet, but it's going that direction, is a transformation where we see people actually find the new business models using those um, ecosystems, those platforms. And you know, uh, I always say, Yolanda, you know what is the best example for this? It's Google Maps. Google Maps is not just the application that helps you to find the right restaurant here in Barcelona, which is almost every restaurant, by the way, uh, but it's also an API. And that's actually the value of Google Maps. People like Uber found that that API, the easy the way, the easy uh, you can uh, access to the developer portal, the, the easy you can find resources on those APIs and consume them and pay as you actually consume those, is actually the value of Google Maps, so that's why the, the Google Maps team is on the transformation side of this um, ladder. And um, platforms, which is what we are doing here, are like the uh, surface way where people can exchange value among each other, and you're just the one that provides that platform, right? And we know that platforms are changing the business, no? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about these four customers a little bit. Uh, we can discuss detail afterwards. I only have 25 minutes. Um, so uh, we were going to cover these customers and what was their uh, uh, transformation through APIs that they made. Let's start, okay? The first one is Magalu. Who knows Magalu here? Who knows what Magalu is? Magalu is a retailer, a Brazilian retailer company that um, basically had a challenge. So they find out that Amazon was actually moving to Brazil. And they said, hold on a second. We have to do something because they're going to cover whole, the whole market. So they, they changed for, becoming a, for being a uh, brick and mortar company to become an online first company. And that was a change uh, that made uh, around in two years, which is really, really amazing for, for a company like this. Um, they actually had an e-commerce before. In 2013, they had an e-commerce and a couple of APIs, but all of those were APIs that were just accessing a backend with more than 150,000 lines of code, so talk about legacy. And uh, they, it wasn't a successful uh, strategy for them. So they started using RPG in this case to integrate the back office with the front ends, and now it's used to the governance of the, all the APIs that are bringing to this. Actually, one, um, one uh, funny fact, they migrated uh, all their applications in 60 days before Black Friday. And during that Black Friday, they made around 64% of sales uh, increase during that Black Friday. They had a peak of uh, 1,600 orders per, uh, per minute at peak, and around 300,000 uh, active uses on site, on peak. They actually didn't stop there. They opened uh, their APIs, not only for the mobile uh, or the online side that they had, they opened this to partners so other partners can uh, be uh, part of their marketplace. So they uh, 
and they move from being uh, 35,000 SKUs, SKUs are products, okay? That's what they had on their retail before, to have more than 4.3 million SKUs. So people were actually putting their products on their own marketplace. And, and right now, they have around 100 APIs, uh, both internal and external, and they make around 1.1 billion uh, monthly requests. One of the funny things as well is that the, uh, the board members saw that this actually was getting traction. It was getting better and better. So they invested even more. So that's how they moved fast uh, to both uh, APD and Google Cloud to make their online presence um, really uh, uh, a thing for them, their strategy. And, and in, another, in another part, they actually not only be, are part of the, of the supply chains, they are also part of the demand, so they integrate with their partners as well. They don't only let in, uh, partners integrate with, uh, with their marketplace, they also integrate with the partners. So it was a complete transformation from a really a retail uh, uh, company that was based on branches to an online-first uh, approach with uh, digital transformation with APIs. The next one, who knows what Aqua Weather is? Yeah, it's like a, a API example by default, right? So for those who don't know it, it's a widely recognized global, uh, um, I'll say uh, uh, there is a data that says that uh, it's one of the biggest big data companies in the world because they serve nine out of 10 mo uh, mobile uh, top brands in terms of weather uh, API. So you basically, the chances are that if you check your uh, weather, uh, the app right now, it's going to Aqua Weather at some point. Right, they are uh, delivering this service to wearables, to TVs, to um, cars, to smart homes, everywhere you might, you might think, right? And they made 50 billion API requests each day. Impressive. Um, the challenge that the, they face is basically they, they have to create this uh, platform so people can start using the Aku Weather uh, APIs straight away. So the onboarding session for, for this developer has to be fast, has to be reliable, and they have to pay per use. They have to have flexible plans in terms of monetization. They use uh, APG and APG monetization for that, and they attract developers and offers this seamless experience so they actually can build on top of Aku Weather uh, even if we, they don't actually show that Aku Weather is the, where the, the data is coming from. During the first two months of this program, they managed to get six, uh, 6,500 users uh, signed. For those, um, within those 6,500, they had uh, 2,000, uh, 2,500, sorry, that created API keys and started building things. And after that, during two months, they had 60 people paying for the API. That actually, how many of you run uh, API programs right now? Having 60 people paying for your program is a really good number for, for two months. All right, next one, Ticketmaster. I guess you don't know what Ticketmaster is, right? All right, it's the leading uh, company um, selling tickets. Um, and they have, um, uh, in words of the of uh, Ismail, which is the SVP, okay, of uh, Ticketmaster, they said um, there cannot be uh, there cannot be a mobile application without APIs. That's for sure, right? And right now, for us, for Ticketmaster, the mobile application drives one billion dollars of revenue. So you can imagine how important APIs were for them. Okay, so they had another challenge apart from that is that. They wanted to offer an experience for both uh, the mobile application and partners, but they wanted to make that experience, uh, again, uh, easy, simple to use, and not exposing uh, complexity. And if you think about it, uh, some, uh, some uh, people using APIs, what they're doing is basically showing the complexity that they have of the backends, even the, their internal problems that they have on their, on, their, on their inside world to the external world. And that's not a successful uh, strategy for APIs. So what they did is uh, work through a way of simplification that complexity through APIs. So partners can now uh, use it. The biggest challenge they had is security. Uh, how many of you have heard about someone uh, buying the tickets with an automated uh, system and then send them and the uh, price increase, you can imagine, right? So they put in place, they have this challenge because if you open this platform to partners, you have challenges as well. One of those is the security. So they managed to create, um, uh, using um, APG Sense, uh, a way to prevent bad bots buying the, the, the API. So, no, sorry, by buying the tickets uh, through their APIs. So for both partners and their own application, they 
are able to uh, create that experience to the fans and not having that, those problems with uh, bad bots uh, buying automatically the, the, um, the tickets. Okay, and finally, uh, on the customer sides, the last one is Walgreens. Who know what Walgreens, Walgreens is? Yeah, okay, some of you. Some of you might not. It's a, pharma, um, a retail for pharmacist uh, products that you can find in the US. They have around, uh, well, actually you can find it everywhere in the US. It's like Starbucks, but for pills, basically. So you go there and then you have 9,500 9, uh, stores all around uh, the US. And they had a challenge. They, they made this decision. They bought these uh, printers for photograph for photographies, okay? And they said, perfect, this is, this is what we're gonna do. We, you're gonna go with your USB, you're gonna plug it in, and then you're gonna print your, uh, your photo. Brilliant idea. You know what happened? This. No one is printing anymore. Okay, perfect. Uh, digital cameras, no one's printing anymore. So they changed and they said, okay, we have to do something with this uh, hardware that we have just purchased. So they created an API and added it to their mobile application, which is the Quick Print API, where you can take a photo and immediately send it to print to the closest Walgreens that you can find, right? Funny thing, after doing that, they find out that people that were going to the store to print uh, their photos, they were picking uh, Diet Coke, they were picking some chewing gum, maybe some uh, milk for later or whatever, and the increases of on sales on those stores where the quick print was actually located were higher than the rest of those. And they said, all right, that actually rings some bell. Let's build more. What they did, they created a few more APIs. The one uh, we see here is prescription API, where you can basically, if you have some kind of um, MD prescription, you can just send it to the to Walgreens and the pharmacist uh, will go there, schedule a specific uh, moment for you to collect your pills and you don't have to waste more time there. Uh, although you might pick up some milk, again, you can pick up some uh, Diet Coke and increase the revenue of that store. And another one, they created the loyalty program. So basically, if you buy more in Walgreens, you get more points, that's a loyalty program. But also, they integrate with other partners, so if you walk, if you jog, if you do something like sports, you gain points and you can spend it on Walgreens. So it was a clever idea. And what we can see is that they're actually leveraging that opportunity that uh, bringing people to the actually retail store was uh, uh, giving the APIs. But they went even further. They opened it to partners. They created a platform. And now what they did is they opened it to, pl to the platform and they actually removed the quick print API from their application. And now you can just do it from, uh, in, in the US from Instagram directly. So you take a photo with Instagram and you send it to print. And that actually drove to six times more spent by customers going there first digital and then on the uh, store and, on, and then to the store. Six, they spent six times more than the ones that I just go in there to the store. There was a fit of, after they opened this to partners, they had a 41% increase of uh, API calls. They had greater than two prescriptions per second coming from the mobile phone. That is impressive. And they have 50 billion million patients accessing these prescriptions through partners' applications, not their own. So they just imagine that uh, you have uh, um, some kind of a doctor uh, application that you can connect directly to Walgreens to get your prescriptions. That's what, we, what we're talking about. And they have over 100 partners building on top of Walgreens platform. So you're probably wondering, okay, how do they do that? How, I mean, of course, APIs is technology, but how do they do that? They treat their APIs as products. We were, I was on another talk before from a, a, um, um, open API, um, .co, I think it's called. Uh, they were talking about uh, product, uh, API as products, and it was a really, really nice talk, and actually encouraged me to put you this. Treat your APIs as products. It's, it's simple, right? But do it, like, for real, like AV and Android is doing. He actually, they name their APIs products. They don't name their APIs APIs just. They call it products. They treat it as products, okay? And how do you start from that? What you have to do is you have to start from the consumer, for your consumer. Who is your consumer? Who is gonna consume your APIs? For example, um, for, for um, Ticketmaster, it was um, the retailers or the partners. For Walgreens was also the partners, like, like Instagram, they were gonna consume those APIs, so they wanted to know exactly what is happening. How are the people consuming those APIs? And that is the key starting point. Next, 
treat your um, APIs as products, not as projects. What does it mean? When you create, when you treat your uh, APIs as projects, you are exposing complexity. You are uh, not getting the uh, adoption that you were expecting for a product. You are um, repeating uh, APIs. How many of you have come across the uh, search engine of your APIs and put customers, and you get customers B2, customers B3, customers for real, consumers, all of this, and you don't know which one to use, right? And finally, what happens is you lack of ownership, and at the end of this life cycle, the API is brought, and you will never use it again. That's because uh, projects are time limited. So people, when, you f when they focus on limit, um, projects, they just build whatever they have to build and then forget about it, right? When you do it in with uh, products, you have to have some kind of uh, continuous interaction. You have a product manager. You have actually driven by revenue, driven by the business. Sorry, um, you have to get uh, uh, iterative uh, interactions on your API. You have to make it succeed, right? And that is what we call the outside-in approach, where you have uh, also you gain a speed to market with this uh, kind of uh, uh, interaction, and. Um, in the, like, if you want to get one line from this uh, slide, is this: you have to start uh, stop building things right, and start building the right things. So stop building customers' APIs. You already have 100, okay, and build it right. It's not about putting Kubernetes or putting microservices. It's about building the right thing. And who are? The people we talk when we're talking about uh, products, we have the developer of the APIs. Uh, sorry, the developers that are consuming those APIs. They think, okay, I have a brilliant idea. I want to get this API, make it work as fast as possible, right? And I want to have no friction. I want to be self-service. So I don't want to talk to sales. I don't want to talk to anyone from that company. I just want to start building things. Then you have the, the API developer that says, <laughs> okay. Hold your horses, that's fine, but we have to put some limitations there. You have to put uh, some limitations on the system so you don't overload my environment and everyone. And then we have the API team, which is the people that is looking at this uh, API as products and saying, okay, how is this driving uh, my business? How is the impact that I'm um, seeing uh, after building this API product? Um, and basically they own the product itself. So what do they see as API consumers at the beginning? I don't know if you see uh, uh, if you have seen this uh, incredible developer portal from Mercedes. They see this. So once you go into a developer portal, we used to say that you have to have the three fives. First five is you have to find the API in five seconds. The second five is you have to know how to learn how to use it in five minutes. And finally, you have to prototype or test that API in around five hours. For me, it's like five days. I'll take it, okay? Um, the product manager has another point of view. They want to measure everything. They want to, no, actually they need to measure everything. They need to measure um, uh, developer engagement. They have to um, see app ratios. They have to see um, uh, success metrics on API calls. They have to uh, measure everything, every single point that could actually impact the business. And that's the vision that they have to see on dashboards. All right. Uh, I hope you are not asleep yet, so hold on a second. Let's talk about a bit, bits of technology. Probably you all know about this, but it's important to say. API programs, API products, is about uh, controlling the relationship between the team that is offering the API, which is the right side, and the team that is using uh, those APIs to build new applications or experience, okay? This is what we call the digital value chain. This is a really important deck. Uh, I have to know it by memory, by heart, and it's what we think is an API product. And to control it, you have to start with uh, authentication. We always recommend, uh, in APG, we always recommend OAuth because it's uh, definitely uh, uh, the standard by f the facto from every single company that we've seen. And it's good enough to, um, to cover all the use cases, and if not, it's flexible enough so you can customize it. It does an spe uh, a specific uh, great job in separating responsibilities from authentication, authorization, and access. So if you don't know about it, you just have, of course, you have to uh, dive into it when you're talking about uh, APIs. 
And API management is able to cover those, uh, those uh, responsibilities as well and give you more insights about it. The next thing we have to talk about is Quota. There is no API without Quota that is successful. Um, the good thing about Quota, and I will be really, uh, really short with this, is that you can trust and trusted uh, consumers if you put Quota. If you don't, basically you are collapsing or you are impacting other customers as well. So keep in mind that Quota, which is putting some kind of a limit to your APIs for the consumers, is a key for success. Mediation. Not everyone uh, is able to have microservices yet. That's a fact, okay? So we might have people that uh, is going to, uh, to have to expose mainframes, or they have to expose the, their Java applications, their Node.js. Even we have some uh, brilliant guys doing gRPC already. Kudos to those. How many of you are using gRPC at the moment? Okay, yeah, you're the guy, perfect. Um, so we have to mediate and offer a common language with an API to our consumers. And that's a contract, so keep that contract. And finally, this is the surprise. Uh, our team, the RPG customer engineer, has come with, uh, with a list of, a of uh, API first principles because why stopping on being uh, API product driven? Why not being API first? Okay, so I'm gonna give you some notes on those. You have here this, um, the um, website, so you can find all the, all the definitions of those. Um, uh, shout out to Tyler Ayers, which is the creator of this. So first of all, scale. Uh, APIs are the nervous system of your organization. So every, uh, for both internal and external, by the way, every cent that we earn has to flow at some point through APIs. That's API first. Standards. Every service in an organization has to have, um, either if it's internal or external, again, I'm not gonna say it again, okay? Um, has to be versioned, managed, and uh, documented with uh, common security, identity, and operation policies. If you, left, if you let silos happen, if someone is doing whatever they want with security, operations, and uh, identity, for example, you will have an unsuccessful program because we'll start uh, bringing new, new silos all over the place and it's unmanageable, okay? So have a standards there. Transparency, meaning that every single API problem has to be uh, consumed through portals with uh, curated documentation and uh, that everyone can uh, check at any time and every change that we do on those products has to be documented that they're uh, as best as possible. All the innovation, that we do it within the company has to flow through APIs. Uh, the, the, if you start innovating and not exposing APIs or innovating accessing other systems without APIs, your API program will not work. Measure, it's important to measure both the operational and the business side of, uh, of the APIs, so that's how we actually find out if our APIs are, are successful. And if they are not, life cycle. We have to let them die but we have to let them die with a clear path of deprecation, transparency, honesty, and being realistic uh, on the migration path for the customers that are using those APIs. We have customers that made an API product because innovation is like that. It's, uh, easy. The easier it is to fail, the better you actually are in innovating. So they actually had some API products that didn't work and they removed them. No problem, but they have a clear path of how to do that and they expose that information to the customer. And finally, value. Value is important for, for our customers, uh, for, for the API program, sorry, because it means that a, an API product is not more important than the whole ecosystem that you're building. So don't focus too much on your API product as the child, okay, and let them go if it doesn't work. And the other way around. So an ecosystem is built on API products. So keep in mind the whole ecosystem that you're building when you're uh, thinking about the value of your platform. And finally, I'm gonna cover this real quick. If you wanna know what solutions uh, Google offers, we have API Gateway Cloud, uh, Cloud Endpoints, which is GCP experience. We have uh, uh, projection with API keys, or JWT, some metrics on the operational side. Uh, but if you really want a full lifecycle API management, RPG, uh, provides you both uh, developer portal, analytics, monetization, uh, business analytics, uh, operational, uh, security, we have multi-cloud, hybrid, and so on. What, how do we cover it? We have the API services, which is the core, okay? We have the engine or the runtime. Uh, 
We have uh, another layer, which is the analytics, where we can find the business analytics, operational, API monitoring, tracing, all these things. And the third layer, which is the developer management, which we have the developer portal, API products, where you can create your API products and then monetize it with uh, API monetization as well. And the deployment options are easy. We have uh, SaaS, where everything is managed by Google. Okay, you can just uh, straight, straight away go ahead and test it. Actually, if you go to the evaluation account, uh, forever, by the way, you can open it and you have a forever API, APG um, uh, uh, account. And that SaaS uh, is the perfect uh, suitable for if you want to start without managing any kind of infrastructure. Then if you want to manage everything, you can use the on-prem or multi-cloud, so you can put it everywhere you want. You have the uh, same product, uh, but managed by yourself, and you can put it uh, on different um, um, clouds, or you can put it on-prem, or you can put it on your own bare metal if you want. Um, and finally, we had some customers that said, okay, I like, I like the SaaS implementation, but I want to have the runtime. Uh, managed by myself. That's why where we introduced uh, uh, Hybrid. It was announced in February in San Francisco in the next Google Next conference, and it lets you run the uh, runtime on uh, Kubernetes, okay, while the rest of the things, such as developer portals, analytics, all of those things that you might not want to manage, it's on the cloud. Okay, it's not GA yet, it's in beta 2, uh, but we're going there, okay? So with that, I think I made 26 minutes. Perfect, thank you very much.